Good morning everyone, welcome to Patchwork Cutters. You'll all laugh when I tell you I've been talking to the camera for the last three minutes <laughs> to myself. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, there's no one logging on, why can I not see it on here? Uh, yeah, I've been chattering away to myself, but anyway, I'm here now. Um, that just about sums it up, doesn't it, today? So good morning everyone, welcome to Patchwork Cutters. My name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes. Clearly I have left of my brain at home this morning and we're going to be looking at some cocoa butter painting so we're going to be doing uh, what are we doing we're doing patchwork cutter summer and we're also going to be doing patchwork cutter butterflies so i've got the two combined together on a plaque that we're going to paint with cocoa butter so for those of you that aren't familiar with me my website address is up there at the moment but i also have a painting school and this is the painting school which you can see up there now so if you pop over to that address you will be able to find all my classes connected with cocoa butter painting which is what we like to do on patchwork cutters now patchwork cutters are excellent for painting um, practice so if you want to have a go at cake painting but the idea of drawing anything or stepping outside of that box is too traumatic then you'll find that this is a really good way to have a go at doing some cake painting without being too stressful which we all like because we don't want to be stressed out by this um, so it's a really good way to get started so the two we're looking at let's have a look at these we have got um summer which is this one here and we've got this one here today which is butterflies and i've combined the two and put them onto a plaque which i'll show you in a minute um, i did actually do the plaque this morning so it's still soft at the moment but that's okay so this is ideal for anyone who wants to kind of do a plaque put it to one side and then pop it onto a cake later on you can do it straight onto a cake if you want to but to be perfectly honest you might as well do it on a plaque keep it and then put it on later because lots of these cakes and people get them they go oh wow they're so pretty i don't want to cut it well they don't have to cut it they can take it off can't they so um they can just lift off the plaque and keep it so it always has a bit of a benefit from that point of view um so yeah not a bad idea so the butterfly set contains well in my case it contains a poppy because that's what i was using last time i was on it, it doesn't normally contain a poppy but anyway um lots and lots of different size butterflies and i've used um the smallest one just on this particular um patchwork cutter this morning so the summer one so let's bring that in so you can see what i've done so there we go that's what it looks like it again i find it so much easier with these patchwork cutters to actually um press them into sugar paste to see my detail before i start painting otherwise they can look really quite complicated and you think well hold on a minute i can't quite see what's going on here marion does all these lovely beautiful pictures which are great actually there we go there's one there um but by eye i think it's easier to push it into the sugar paste and see what you've got and i would apply that rule to any of these kind of patchwork cutters because um as I say, you can pick up so much more detail rather than looking at it in a picture. So roll out a bit of sugar paste and have a little look and see what's going on. See if it's the sort of thing that you would like to paint. So we're going to have a go at painting this shortly. Um, I'll just move that to one side for the moment. I'll just talk about my little setup here for those of you that are not aware of how to do cocoa butter painting. So we sell kits on my site, not on Marion's site, um, for beginners cocoa butter painting. I've got very ahead of myself this morning and set this up early so my metal paint palette is extremely hot so i'm just going to grab a bit of a kitchen roll so i can move this so underneath here i this is a chrome food warm and underneath there there is a tea light which has made this metal paint palette super hot um, and because it's made it super hot um, all the cocoa butter has melted so there you go you can see it melted it starts off like this little buttons and then once you pop some heat into it, it turns into a liquid and then we can use our dusting colours to mix through it to make paint. So that's how it works. So we need to keep that heat consistent. And the way to keep that heat consistent is by having a, a flame underneath it or some boiling water. So you can get uh, just get a bowl, fill up with boiling water, put a paint palette on top and paint that way. The only thing with that is that obviously as the water starts to cool down, you are going to have to change it roughly every sort of 20 minutes and you might have no 
problem with that at all or you might just prefer to have a candle underneath it and just keep painting that way i know some people use like um wax melt type systems as well which is fine anything that just creates a bit of heat really so just to keep it nice and straightforward now i've got quite a few colors on here this morning summer is a time when there's lots and lots of colors going so we've got they're all sugar flare we've got petal blue We've got grape violet, we've got primrose, we've got uh, moss green today, sunset orange, uh, that is blush pink, white and burgundy. So I've got quite a lot of colours on there today and obviously the cocoa butter has started to melt already. And when I paint, I talk about paintbrushes with numbers on them and that's because it's easier for me if I know which paintbrush you've got in your hand. Um, to tell you and now pick up paintbrush number one or number two you can see these are numbered on here so these have come from my website we do sell them in sets of five or individually um, and it just means that during most of my tutorials not all of them but most of my tutorials I will refer back to numbers so we're now using number one we're now using brush two um, there is a zero and a zero zero brush as well um, and it's just a size thing it just helps me um, just to make sure that you know you're not using the chunkiest brush ever when you come to do some of those um sort of really tiny details okay right so there we go let's move things around a little bit let me bring myself back on screen for a minute just to prove i am here <laughs> let's bring that down there like that right okay so we get a reasonable view so this is summer don't forget this is on my website i have actually got them here unbelievably um so we have got those in stock already and we've got butterflies as well. So we've got a double whammy there. So that's all good, isn't it? That's what we want. Right, let's just see where we are camera-wise. Yeah, that looks good. Right, where we go. Let's go back down there again. So we're going to start painting this. Let's see what we're going to do with this. Just need to organise myself. There we go. Right. Okay, so the plan of action with this is uh, I was going to do this uh, sort of peachy colour. So we're going to start from a base of Sunset Orange. So Sunset Orange is quite a strong colour. So I'm going to just dip my paintbrush into the cocoa butter and I'm going to pick up some Sunset Orange. There it is. Grab a bit of white. And I'm going to make that a peachy colour. So it's amazing. You wouldn't believe you'd get a peach colour from such a bright orange, but you will. So we're going to mix that first. And what we want to do is make sure the paint is quite thick. We don't want it to be too runny. Um, so the, the thicker the paint, the more powder is in it. The thinner the paint, the less, the more cocoa butter is in there and the less amount of dust it's in there. I've spread that around a little bit, haven't I? Okay, so we'll start off with this one in the middle. So we are just going to paint the whole thing. So we're not going to worry too much about sort of any lines or details. We're just going to go over the whole thing like so so just take it down i just thought we'd try a peach color for a center instead today rather than a pink i keep getting told off for doing pink by kelly you see so i'm trying to do peach it makes a bit of a change doesn't it so so all the petals are marked out for you so you're not sort of specifically looking um sort of paint you know you're not making it up it's there it's painting by numbers but with cake so it's quite a nice way to do this really so if you miss any of the tutorials that i do um or marion does on here they are all in the featured section of this page so if you go up to featured you will find all these tutorials so if you sort of see one i did ages ago and you think oh how did you do that you can go back and watch them. These are also become available on my YouTube channel. So uh, at Tracy Man Cakes is where you'll find um, some of these tutorials. And then for sort of super quick tutorials, like under a minute, um, we're on TikTok as well, which is again at Tracy Man Cakes. And you'll find um, some of the tutorials on there for particularly um, cookie cutters and wedding cake deliveries and things like that so you'll find all those sort of bits and pieces on there so there's lots and lots going on all the time keep you all entertained there you go so that's quite a nice color isn't it i won't say no to that color all right let's keep going so i only only iced this this morning which is absolutely fine but you just got to be careful you don't lean on it you know or put your arm on it just have to be a bit mindful of that 
you do it in advance, it doesn't matter, but if you don't, then you just have to think about it a bit more. Okay, so nearly down. So I'm leaving the middle bit out at the moment because I'm going to go in there with a different colour. So you can see I'm sort of avoiding that centre bit. There we go. Make sure it's all filled in. Some of the gaps, because they're quite sort of gone in quite deep, and just push your brush down in there to so make sure you get it all. So, yeah, okay, happy days. Right, when we want to change colour, we just put our paintbrush into the cocoa butter and just twist it onto the kitchen roll just so we can clean it all up. There we go. So, we haven't got any of that stuck in there. There we go, like so. Right, okay, so we've done that one. Now, what have I got down here? So, I have a plan to do. Let's turn this round. So I plan to do the pan, that's a pansy. Um, I'm going to do that yellow. So we're going to do it yellow and burgundy. So we take some yellow, I'm gonna add some white to it. A bit more white. I like pansies, they're nice and bright, aren't they? You can't go wrong with a pansy. So we're gonna come in here. like so take that down made it too strong the white's taken the sharpness out of the yellow because it was very yellow um so that's taken that out i'm going to paint that bit in the middle there because that's would be yellow in fact to be perfectly honest i'm just going to paint the whole thing so it doesn't actually matter because the color i'm going over with is darker so i don't want to make it too difficult for myself so i'll just paint the whole thing once you've kind of put the first layer of colour on, it's the next bit where it starts to sort of come to life. So you kind of got to think, well, I'm going to paint this and then I'm going to kind of put some highlights and bits and pieces in. So um, that's the aim of this anyway. Let's fill that bit in. Okay. It's very warm at the moment. We were talking about this on Gold Membership a minute ago, my little group saying it's actually quite warm at the moment which means the cocoa butter is taking quite a bit longer to dry it's not too bad on this side i mean it has cooled down a little bit obviously when it's very very warm it's a, it really is a bit of a nightmare isn't it we all know that um you can put things in the fridge to kind of set a bit quicker maybe but um yeah it's definitely not so easy right we're gonna have a look at uh, making a lilac color so we've got two colors here we've got grape violet and we've got petal blue um this grape violet on its own is very muddy if you mix it with petal blue you get a much better color and then you add some white into it a bit more of that Okay, you get much it's less muddy okay so that petal blue seems to change it i don't know why but it does there we go let's make it a little bit brighter a bit more white there we go you always need plenty of white when it comes to doing your cake painting go through more white than you go through anything else Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll head over to this bit here. So this is the underside of the fuchsia. I'm a big fan of these because um, I've got a massive one of these in my front garden that used to be in my granddad's garden. I went and took a clipping off it and uh, it's um, it's been there ever since. I think they're like indestructible, which is my kind of gardening really because I've got a bit of a, <laughs> a track record for not being very good at keeping things alive. Turn that around. We're using paintbrush one the whole time at the moment. We haven't switched over. Potentially, we might need zero. I got one. No, I'm using two. Well, I never. I'm using paintbrush two and I didn't even know it. Right, there we go. Might change over to actually a one because the detail is starting to get a little bit more. So let's switch down to paintbrush one. And then we'll go to the other end of this which I think is the mud version of where that one comes out. I 
think that's right anyway. I think it sort of goes all throughout the whole thing. There we go. These are quite nice fun projects to do as well because they only take about, I don't know, 45 minutes roughly. You can take a bit longer if you want to, but they don't take that long to do. So if you fancy sort of a quick bit of cake painting, roll out a bit of sugar paste, press in some patchwork cutters and off you go. So it really doesn't take very long to do. It's quite a quick, quick one to get involved with. Actually, I was going to just take that yellow and just put some in the middle of there. go right okay now we've got some make sure we get these bits in the right place so we've got pink in here as well so let's go around oh, I've gone the long way around hot very very hot today because so I've got a new candle under there I think that's what the problem is right put some white in there let's brighten that up a bit Right, so we will make sure we get these bits in here. So these are, this is the fuchsia where it's like peeled back. So this one is out in sort of full bloom. One bit there and one bit there. I always find again with these, if you paint the larger bits, the smaller bits then suddenly stand out and you go, aha, this now makes more sense. Because sometimes it can be a bit distracting when there's a lot of sort of bits here and there. This is also honeysuckle. So we're going to come in here with a bit of pink. Again, paintbrush one is fine for this. It's just about OK. Okay, so just got in there. There's also a bud there, so we're going to catch that as well. Because don't forget when they're closed, you can't see this purple colour under here. You can only see the outside edge and then that would be green. So the bit that connects it would be green. So be careful you don't sort of pick up on that. And then on this side, what we're going to do here is I think that one is out. Oh no, that's green there as well, so we won't touch that. So we'll leave that on that side. I've put a tiny bit of pink there, but hey ho. Oh! That's what I was looking for. I knew there was another bit of honeysuckle somewhere. So let's pop that in there as well. That's better. Okay, so you can see it building up quite quickly already. Right, okay, let's turn that down. Okay, let's do the leaves next. Let's work on those. So I'll grab a bit of moss green. Actually, that's quite a lot of moss green. Let's put some white in it. So moss green, gooseberry green, they're quite nice leaf colours. Again, just remember I'm working in sugar flare. So we'll just start to fill these in. and I think that leaf overlaps yep I want to get this right so don't marry and telling me off you see <laughs> there we go and up here so again just follow that round I said on camera, yes, I am just about. Okay. Um, I think these are slightly different leaves on this side, but I'm not too worried about that. I think we'll just stick to the same colour. I'll oh, just paint those in there. And then another one in there. If you do follow any of these tutorials, if you can tag us in them, that would be good, please, so you know where you've learnt them. So if you can tag us in at Patchwork Cutters Club or and or Tracy Man Cakes, that would be good because then we can 
hopefully persuade a few other people to have a go as well. So there's the stem, so all that bit comes down here and then we've got that bit connecting it there. It's like a jigsaw puzzle this. There we go. And on this one here. Although I think that might be pink actually. I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold that for a second, hold that thought for a second. Let me just clean that brush. So if you're not sure on the colours, which of course I clearly am not, let me just clean this brush up. You can, if you're fairly quick, just take the colour out or alternatively, to be perfectly honest, just let it dry. You put a bit of cocoa butter in there. You can remove that colour or take it back anyway. Just strip the colour back a little bit. Leave it for a minute to dry and then we can go in there and overpaint that. I'm going to carry on with my green for the moment. I'll come back to you over there. So there's another leaf tucked under there. So paintbrush one definitely now because you've got to get in behind this honeysuckle. And there's not a very big gap here to do that. Okay, and then obviously there's more green up here. So this is Patchwork Cutters Summer, for those of you that are looking for it. So it's on my website, you'll find it on there under Patchwork Cutters. Go into Cake Supplies and then go into Patchwork Cutters and you'll find it in there. The Cake Supplies is at the top of the site. Hopefully you should find it in there, there we go. Okay, so you can see already you got once you've got the basic colours in this, um, it soon picks up quite quickly. Uh, let's go back to that area over here. So I'm just going to paint that pink, and then we'll just overpaint that pink up there. I'll have to go back again and do it later, but it's pretty much covered it. Actually, I think I want that bit green. I keep changing my mind. What I want there? I'm going to have that bit green and that bit pink. Now I'm happy. Not that I'm fussy. <laughs> it's worth being fussy though, isn't it? Because then you get what you what you um, want it to look like. Right, okay, so butterflies, let's do those next. And I'm denied about what to do with those, but I think what we're going to do is we will do a combination and we will do some sort of quite orangey type ones. With a little bit of white in there, so we don't want them to be too bright. Oh yeah, nice. Let's do an orange one. So we'll just paint the whole thing. We won't worry too much, but we try and stay on the same kind of colour palette that we've got for this. So if we use Sunset Orange in a sort of stronger capacity, um, then it will stand out really nicely, won't it? Yeah, well, that's good. Let's do them all like that. Now uh, we've just committed. Okay. We'll paint the bodies separately, but we won't do that just yet. We'll just um, just worry about the, the body part at the moment. Because once we've done that, we've actually painted near enough everything and then we can start fiddling around with shading and detail. I'll do another one down there. Let's keep it bright. It is summer. that okay and then we'll come back and do their center bits later I'll let that dry off first so there we go so we've got the rough idea where we are so while we've still got this color on our brush we'll go back to the um, this orangey color here we're going to make this a little bit darker not that dark, a little bit darker. And then we'll start doing a bit of detail on here. So we'll put some colour on. And just see if we can split some of these petals up. We need a bit more powder in there. It's a bit thin. 
see if we can start making it a bit more kind of 3D. Hopefully, all being well. How's it coming out? Always looks better on camera than it does in front of me. I look up and go, oh, wow. I look down and go, oh, goodness. It's because I'm painting it flat. You see, it's job for me to see it. Now, the cocoa butter is taking much longer to dry than normal at the moment, so um, it is much more trickier to paint with. Um, if I press this down, it's still a little bit damp from earlier on. It's just a seasonal thing. It's no different from having buttercream that's sort of more likely to sort of cause problems in the summer. You work around it. I do all the cake decorating all year round, but I just know at some points of the year it's easier to do, say, royal ice cookies now than it is normally because they dry so much quicker. Um, there are certain things you can do at different times that make life a little bit easier just because of the weather. Oh, turn that round. Just put a bit of colour in that gap up there, really. Well, that's starting to stand out already. Mm -hmm. Right, let's carry on. So I have got burgundy colour here. So this is burgundy sugar flare. Put a bit of white in it. I'm not too sure how dark this is going to come out. I want to kind of test it in the centre of this. I'm just going to put a few kind of dots in the middle of this in the burgundy over the white. Oh, that's looking okay. Let's go to this. Is this dry? Not really. Sort of. Very sort of. So we'll be cautious with this and we're just going to put a little bit of burgundy here. A pansy. Try not to go too dark. Yeah, that's all right. Better than I thought. That's always a good sign. So when you go onto Google or when you go outside and have a look, there are so many colours of pansies available. You can literally pick any colour of the rainbow. I just love pansies, so I think you're going to have all the choice you want to do this one. I really don't think you're going to struggle to find the right colours to do this. I'm just going to go over that in a slightly darker yellow and change my colours now. Clean my brush up. So I'm just trying to make sure I've got all the yellow out, which I think I have. I'm just going to put a little bit more cocoa butter into one of those containers. Right, let's grab some of this yellow, make it a little bit more yellow. Again, we'll just Let's split that up a bit. So I'm trying to find out what's in this brush. I need a little bit of peach, but that's okay. Could have done this before the burgundy, but I was quite sort of keen to see what the burgundy was going to do, so I didn't want to wait for too long. some round here just to make it look a bit more interesting just rather than flat I 
and make that centre bit a bit more yellow too. Okay. Right. Let's go back to the pink. Make the pink a bit stronger now. And we're just going to put a little line down the back of the honeysuckle. Like so. I am managing to do this with paintbrush one. It's a bit tight, but I'm just about getting away with it. Maybe a bit more pink still. Uh, yes, I have still got pansy mould, Janie. It's on my site under cookie cutters. And we'll put a little bit of pink down there as well. And then up here. Colours are standing out now. We'll go back in. Right, let's go back to lilac. We'll make that a little bit darker. Just add in a bit more grape violet. Down there like so. Turn this round. All right, turn it back again. Oops, I'm off screen a little bit. There we go. I was wandering away then. Right, okay, what have we got here? I'm going to just take that burgundy again. I think I might just try and do these in burgundy, but I need a bit more. I don't want to do them in black because black is too harsh. So if I can do these in burgundy, they'd be a little bit more kind of in the same colour scheme as the, the whole thing. You might be better with your zero brush here it's very tight. I'm going to just about get away with it with a one. If you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself probably use a zero I think. All right let's add a bit more colour to those butterflies shall we. Maybe put some, let's see what a bit of yellow will do if we can get any yellow on them. Yeah there we go, a little bit of yellow on them. in the middle maybe. There are bits that have made up butterflies. I'm sure you could find some better butterfly left blah, better butterfly <laughs> references. I'll get there in a minute. Than the ones I'm making up, but they look quite nice. If they did exist in nature, I'm sure they would be very nice. But I'm just showing you here that you can paint over cocoa butter. You don't have to wait for it to dry. Okay. okay, right, let's go back to the leaves. So let's turn that round now. So we just need to make this a little bit stronger. Okay, so we're just going to go straight down the side of these. And we'll move it across the stem. And the back. underside of that leaf. Right, let's take a bit more green, make it a bit darker still. Okay, 
Okay, and then this one under here is going to be fairly dark. But that, obviously the leaves change everything to be honest. The leaves are sort of like the culmination of it all. Can't imagine it without leaves really, can you? Well, I think... To be honest, I think that's near enough it. Let's clean that brush up. Let's put just a bit of white on here. So if you wanted to do anything else, we've got these like dotting tools here, which are very good. They're used for nail art, but they are quite good for doing little tiny dots on things. So if you wanted to put some dots on the butterfly wings, perhaps. Did a whole course on these dotting tools quite addictive actually and I have other plans for these at Christmas so stand by for that one. Um, if you wanted to then put some, I'm going to call it gypsophilia, baby's breath, that kind of thing, that kind of look amongst this, you can go around with a dotting tool and just put some little white dots. That always kind of softens it out. Don't have to go mad with it but you can put things on there it's probably not that easy to see on camera but it is again by eye hopefully you'll see it when i take a photograph of it later and then you'll be able to see it you'll be able to zoom in and have a look won't you and see what i've done on there there we go let's move that out of the way and that is there we go so that's the one that's called summer and that is Marion's patchwork cutter and it's also got butterfly on there as well. So you can paint it up in lots of different colours. On the example she's got on the actual packaging, she's done the this flower here in pink and this pansy she's done in like a sort of a bluey violety colour. And then she's made this one a bit more of a sort of um, cherry pink colour and this is again similar colour to the pansy. So Marion has done some different things on it honeysuckle is honeysuckle so you can't really do too much more with that we could shade it further with burgundy if we particularly wanted to so if you wanted to add a bit more depth to it um you could do that as well um and obviously then by using the, the butterflies you can add a, another dimension to it so i don't think you can go too wrong with those butterflies i think having a set of those is kind of invaluable really because you can put butterflies on literally anything can't you um so they work quite well just being stamped in around that as well so there you go. I'll give you that for a second. I will take a photograph of it and put it onto the page so that you can see it. So there we go. Right. Give me a few more seconds to have a look at it and then we'll move it. OK, there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this morning's cake painting. If you do want to get involved or have a look at any of the cake classes that I run. So I do have a massive painting school online. Go to the school site, which is tracymancakeschool.co.uk. Likewise, if you want to buy any of the patchwork cutters, nip over to Tracy's Cakes. We have two websites. Very confusing. We have two websites, one for the school, one for the products. Um, if you go into cake supplies and then look at patchwork cutters or uh, new products, you'll find them in there. Um, for this particular one which is called summer and butterflies so um, I hope to see you all again soon on patchwork cutters thank you Marion for letting me come on and paint your beautiful things and um, I will hope to see you all again soon so take care bye for now